Hi everyone, thanks a lot for watching this short video on the Cyberac PAM integration with AWS Redshift. We have had several requests from the prospects, existing customers and the partners lately, asking us, hey, how Cybera can help them to manage the AWS Redshift uh, credentials. So this is the reason I thought of like creating this very short video. So let's proceed. So this is the brief agenda, what we are going to discuss again, we will be spending majority of the time doing the demonstration or looking at the configuration. So first we will try to understand uh, what is AWS Redshift. And then we will try to see whether you can use any of the Cybrax existing plugin to manage, uh, manage AWS Redshift credentials. And then last but not the least, we will be looking at the workflow and we will be jumping onto the demonstration. So first let's look at it very briefly about what is uh, AWS Redshift. So Redshift has become a very popular service within AWS and it is primarily a cloud data warehouse solution. So it is primarily based on OLAP or online analytical processing column database and it leverages upon Postgres A.x version. And there are a lot of use cases around real-time intelligence, business intelligence, log analysis. Again, all these use cases can be filled using AWS Redshift. Again, uh, if you want to learn more about AWS Redshift, you can go to the AWS website and you will be able to find tons of documentation in the videos to learn more about that. Here. So for today's context, we are going to focus upon can CyberArk really help to manage AWS Redshift credentials or not? So this is the uh, most uh, common question what we are hearing. So my answer to most of my uh, partners and the customer is why not? So what we can do, we can leverage upon ODB, ODBC based approach to manage the credentials of the AWS Redshift. And this is how, this is what we are going to see today. And from there, you will be able to help out uh, your existing team members or able to help out your customers or or anybody whoever is really interested to manage those credentials. So let's jump on to the most interesting part. That is the demonstration part. Before the demonstration, let's look into it. Like what are the different configuration I have set up so that you can follow a similar set of a configuration. That's how you will be able to manage a Redshift credential. The first thing what you have to do, you have to download the 32-bit ODPC driver 1.4.52 on the CPM connector machine. You have to install it. Again, you can download this uh, ODPC driver from the AWS website. The second thing what we are going to do, we are going to leverage upon the existing platform. So I was using Microsoft SQL Server platform. I just duplicated the platform and uh, you will see I rename it as AWS Redshift. So once you do that, so there are a few changes what you have to do. The first change is like on the connection command, you have to use this particular setting again from the driver standpoint. We will be using the new Amazon Redshift driver what we have downloaded on the step number one. On the change command, uh, there is a certain, uh, uh, there is a slight changes uh, from, from the MS equal. Again, this is the change command what you have to do. You have to put a alter user, percent user percent password percent uh, the new password. You can follow this command here. So or what, uh, uh, what I will be using and then reconcile command is gonna be the same. So once you make all these changes, so what you can do after that, you can onboard uh, AWS Redshift account and uh, using the same uh, Cybrax CPM platform, AWS Redshift platform, what we created here. Yeah. So it's quite simple. It won't take more than like 10 to 15 minutes to figure it out. So let's jump on to the demonstration. So from the demonstration perspective, so what I did, so first I go to the AWS Redshift. So what I did, I spin off uh, one of the cluster in the cluster, like this is some of the settings is like I'm using a database name. I think this is the default database name and the port number 
and the admin username and the passwords and all these different things. So all these things has already been pre-created. Uh, so what you have to do, you have to use this endpoint as well. So, so yeah, so these are the few things what you will require and you have to make sure the appropriate connectivity is there uh, between your CPM and the Redshift cluster, what you have created. Once you are able to do all these, so then what you can do, you can go to the Cyberox side. In the Cyberox side, so let's look into the component server or my CPM server. On the CPM server, what I did, uh, I downloaded these drivers. So this is the driver what I downloaded, Amazon Redshift ODBC32. If I go to my ODBC, so here you will be able to see on the data sources. So if I go to the driver, you are able to see, I have already installed these drivers here. So this is the driver what we are going to use for the, for the communication. So once it is done, then we will go to the client. In the client, you can uh, log in as your, as your vault admin. So I'm logging as one of my username, Mike. So once you do that, it's taking so much of time. So once you are able to log in, so what we will uh, going to do, we will go to the administration tab, the platform management tab, and uh, the database. So what I did, I simply duplicate this platform and I rename it as like AWS Redshift. So once you click on the edit button, another thing what I did, if I go to my additional policy settings, so this is what I did like on the change command, all the user percent user password percent new password when you can sign is the same this is the connection method what we what i'm using yeah you should follow the same approach here so once uh, everything has been done on the on the platform setting what you can do you can go to the accounts and you can start onboarding your redshift accounts so by default so they got a account called like aws user so I already onboarded this account. If I go to the details, so you are able to see. Uh, okay, let me go to the classic interface. So here you are able to see my device type. So we are using a platform name as AWS Redshift. And then you have to key in your Redshift FKDN. Again, you should be removing the port number and the database name on the database name you are, I'm configuring, I'm using the default one, which is called dev, and the port number is 5439. So here, what we are going to do, so first let's try to, or what we can do, we can try changing the password here. So this is the long password, let me copy, and then we can try doing the comparison. So, Copy. So, so this is my password. So let's try changing the password. So we are going to change the password immediately. It will take like around one to two minutes. So I will pause this video. Yeah, so password has been rotated. If I go to the activities tab, so here you are able to see the ch CPM change password has been success. So what we can do, we can show the password. Uh, let me copy the password. So I think we can do the comparison here. So yeah, there is some issue in my browser or somewhere. I cannot copy the password. So if we do it like this way. 
So you are able to see the password has been just changed here. So this is uh, the password change. You can do the password verify as well, but we will try to use another account and then we will try to uh, try to use the reconcile option. So here, what we will do. So first, I think we go to the classic interface and uh, let's try verifying the password. So again, it, it takes around like one to two minutes. So we have to wait. Let me pause this video. Yeah. So it took around like one minute, one to two minutes. If I click on the activity tab, so here you are able to see the CPM verify password has been success. So what we are going to do, uh, we will, let's try to uh, change the password. Let's try to try to keep like some random password or something. And then we will try to do the verify process again and then it should fail and once it fails then what we will do we will try to do a reconcile option here so we have set the password to some random a random number so we will try to verify the password this time it should fail here this account is scheduled for immediate verification so let's wait for like one minute so we are resuming the recording. So here you see, as expected, we got error message that CPM failed to verify the password. So what we are going to do, so what I did, I associated my AWS user. So that's my like a super user account as a reconcile account. So using this particular user, I should be able to reconcile uh, this DB users, uh, the credentials here. So let me click on reconcile button and it will take like another one to two minutes so i will pause the recording and then we will come here so it took almost like one minute so here we can see this account was successfully reconciled by the cpm at like 5 5 a.m so what we can do we can show the password first it's such a long password and then what we can do we can simply click on verify and let's see whether the password has been can be verified successfully or not. Yeah, it is going to take few seconds okay so now looks like if i go to the activities the cpm verify password it's a success here. so that's how uh, we can conclude our demonstration and this presentation so in short like uh, you just have to uh, make small changes into the platform settings and once you are able to do that so using the odbc based driver you will be able to manage aws redshift uh, credentials thanks a lot everybody for watching this short video